Thanks to the new Ahsoka show, LEGO has remade the Jedi T6 shuttle, a set I never thought we'd see a new version of, but things have changed. The original version came out in 2011 with 389 pieces for just $60 at the time, and the new version has released in 2023 with 599 pieces for $80. Now in this video, we're going to compare the minifigures, play features, displayability, value, and I'll give my opinion to help us find out which of these sets is better after all these years. Before we talk about minifigs, I want to talk about a couple of the small things that changed recently. LEGO Lego changed their instruction manuals to look way worse than they used to. Back in 2011, of course, they kind of matched the box art and had a really epic look. Nowadays, they just kind of slap their worst render on there and call it good. It's not something that materially affects my enjoyment of the product, but it's still a change that clearly looks worse. An area where Lego has improved, though, is with the sticker sheets. They used to not number which sticker goes where, and so you just kind of have to figure it out as you went. This was a bigger problem on larger sets than sets like this, but having the stickers numbered as you go through the instruction manual makes the process way easier than not. Moving into the minifigure category, both of these sets include four minifigures, which is surprisingly the right number. A lot of times with LEGO Star Wars, it feels like you don't get enough, but four in each of these sets feels right. Now with the Clone Wars T6, we get Anakin, Obi-Wan, Sasse Tin, and Shock T, a really good selection of characters, and the same can be said for the Ahsoka T6, with Ahsoka, Sabine, Professor Hu Yang, and Marok. Now, there are some obvious quality differences between these two sets with minifigures. For 2011, the T6 figure Figures were very good, but clearly as time has gone on, LEGO Star Wars in some areas has improved a lot with the detail that they're adding to minifigures. You may have noticed none of the 2011 minifigures have any leg printing. On the other hand, all of the 2023 Ahsoka minifigures do have leg printing, plus the Ahsoka has arm printing. Obviously none of the 2011 figures have arm printing either. Only Sesay Tin from 2011 has back printing, meanwhile all of the 2023 figures have back printing. So another big difference there between LEGO's quality back in the day versus now. Now they're just adding a lot more detail. Another cool difference to see is the lightsaber blade colors for green here. The old green looks way worse than what we have now with the frosted green. It's just a much better look for 2023 than what we had in the past. It's neat to see where LEGO has improved in areas like that because it's clearly better now than it was before. While I really like all eight minifigs here, I think it's pretty clear that the 2023 T6's figures are just a step above what we were getting before. So for that reason, I'm giving 2023 the point on this one. For play features will start where you'll find one of the biggest differences and that is the cockpit and the amount of minifigures you can fit in the cockpit specifically is obviously going to be less in the newer set because it's smaller. With the 2011 set you have to pull the windscreen off and it's connected by like six studs so it can be a little bit more difficult than you would like to take off but once it's off you have access to a very large interior space on the cockpit here. There's even a control panel in there and again very spacious compared to what we're going to see in 2020 three and this allows you to fit two minifigs it looks like you could possibly stuff all four in there but i'm not gonna bother pretty solid setup to throw obi-wan on one side anakin on the other and you can pop your canopy on top and you're good to go. Now, like I said, the new cockpit is unfortunately just smaller, but it is a little bit easier to open because it's just on a hinge there. You just pull it open and you have a lot easier access to the interior, albeit a much smaller one. There's also a printed control panel on the inside and you can place a soak it in with ease and then close this back up and you're good to go. Between the two, I really like the hinge for the new one, but that size advantage on the old one is certainly nice. And the old one has another advantage when it comes to play. It can be used as an escape pod, like this is an intended function. I mean, you can pull Ahsoka's off, don't get me wrong, but I don't quite think, and it's certainly not shown on the box, that this is supposed to be like an escape pod, like it is on the 2011 version here. So you can now use this to fly around with a couple of your Jedi inside, and it even has some blue on the back, I think, to kind of represent thrust. It's that nice little extra touch that goes a long way with little things like that on some LEGO Star Wars sets. So I really love the play functionality of this, and it's very easy to reattach. Flanking either side of the 2023 T6 is a play feature that wasn't invented in 2011, the stud shooter, bang. Hidden deep within the 2011 T6 shuttle, a play feature many people would rather forget in 2023, the flick fire missile. And it it's very hard to notice. You fire it off by pushing as hard as you can on the back of the engine here. The strength of your push directly correlates to how well it works, unlike the stud shooter. Now in that 2011 middle section, there is nothing else going on, but for 2023, instead of flick fire missiles, they actually have a nice interior where you can open up these side panels and access some interior space. You're not gonna be able to put minifigs in there, but you can store weapons and accessories in there quite easily, and it's nice to see them at least make use of that space. Both of these sets have retractable landing 
landing gear, and while they use different techniques, they are effective all the same. They fit in with their respective designs and stabilize the sets when you want to put them down on the table or on a shelf. The final and main play feature is of course spinning. It is a good trick and you do have to have the landing gear retracted to be able to spin these sets because otherwise the landing gear will get in the way. The spinning on the newer set is actually a lot more free flowing than it was in 2011 because 2011 used a slightly more complicated mechanism that increased the friction. When it comes to the play functions category, I think it's a wash. 2023 does have some nice improvements over 2011 as far as the smoothness of spinning, but this one did have the escape pod, but then again, this one did have the interior space, and so I think I gotta call it a tie here. You really couldn't go wrong with either of these as play sets. Moving into the design and display category, I think the 2023 T6 shuttle is a really good example of how LEGO makes use of significantly smaller pieces these days to achieve a very similar design, but with a little bit more intricate detail, but also a smaller size. This newer T6 shuttle is smaller. And I think this top-down view will make a few of you guys sad because it clearly shows that this new one has been downsized, but I will say the detail on the new one is phenomenal compared to the old one. They can just do little intricate things better than they could before, and I think that goes a long way on the design of the newer one versus the older one, which just looks a little bit more blocky. Now, as I showed earlier, the cockpit in 2023 is clearly smaller, and I do think it's worse off for that, but the detail on it being printed just like 2011 is great. They're both printed, but I will say the 2011 one does not color match the white very well. That's something Lego has always had a problem with. The white print doesn't color match the actual white bricks at all. It's not even close, but because they made the newer set in a light gray color scheme instead of a white color scheme, the print on the cockpit actually does match what we see on the Lego set. And so from the perspective of just having colors match, the newer one actually looks way better than the older one did. It can definitely be debated whether or not it should have been light gray or should have been white based on what you can see in the Ahsoka show, but it can't be debated that the colors actually match, and you couldn't say that about 2011, so I do see that as a vast improvement. Another area I think the newer T6 just beats out the older T6 is with the design for the engines. It just looks so much better on the newer set because the old one had to use these large pieces to accommodate that flick fire missile feature. Turns out you don't need that in 2023 because they don't really use flick fire missiles anymore and it looks way better. You also have this little turret on the back that looks pretty cool, just not there. I don't know if it was supposed to be on the Clone Wars one or not, but it does look cool on the new one. I also gotta say, I really love how thin the part underneath the T6 is. It's just one brick thin versus two on the 2011 version. And while the landing gear accomplishes the same thing on both sets, there's no question it's more aesthetically pleasing on the new one. Both of these sets are sturdy enough to be handled pretty strongly so that you obviously kids can play with them, but like if you're just picking them up, you don't have to worry about either of them breaking. So from a design perspective, that's good. And then finally, more of a display thing, is the bottom of these ships. And I guess from the display perspective, you really won't see the bottom of the ships because you should be displaying it like this with the good side up top. But both of them do have particularly horrendous undersides. I don't know which one I dislike more. I mean, the one where they kind of like half did it and they added at least some color to the bottom side of the T6 or the one where they literally didn't try at all for 2023 and did nothing on the bottom side of the T6. Honestly, I guess it doesn't really matter from the display perspective. It's definitely something that's gonna bother some people, slightly myself included, but like when I have these things flipped over on the display the way they would be for any sensible person, like honestly, I, I don't think I care all that much about the underbelly of the T6s because that's how they really look is like this. When it comes down to it, I think the 2023 T6 is the better design set and and will look better on your display, unless you have a very niche 2011-esque Clone Wars display. This one is the one that looks better. It has more detail, it's more intricate, just has better looking things overall. The colors match better, so it has a lot going for it that the 2011 version just misses in a few spots, but that's not to say the 2011 version is all bad. It obviously is a much larger set than what we see in 2023, but the size difference isn't like astronomical, so I don't see it as the biggest downside, although it's certainly something a lot of people will point to as a reason the old one is better because it is slightly bigger. But at the end of the day, for design and display, I'd go with 2023. Now we need to have that uncomfortable talk about money. The 2011 set cost $60 upon release. However, adjusted for inflation, that's over $80 in today's money. And the new 2023 set costs just $80. So let's just call it even there. Both sets are $80 in today's money. And if it was a one-to-one -one comparison, I think the obvious points are to say that the older 
older set is bigger, but the new set does use more pieces, but this is a great example of why price per piece is dumb, stupid, and dumb, because you can use 200 more pieces and end up with a smaller model because you use smaller pieces, even though it's like the same exact footprint. So now you know. Now when it comes to the minifigs, I think that's where the 2023 set really sets itself apart for value. They're just higher quality minifigures than what we were seeing in 2011 for what is essentially the same money in 2023 here. I think the T6 design is better, although the size is smaller. I think that's a bit of a wash there as far as value is concerned. I mean, they both have about the same play features as I explained, so it's not like you're getting a significantly better or worse play experience from one set or another, but I think when it comes down to it, the minifigs in that new set, man, they just really set it apart from the old one. What I think this shows is while the T6 in 2011 was certainly considered overpriced at the time, at least they're consistent with it. You know, I don't think LEGO has gotten exorbitantly more expensive, at least in this one particular case, than they were 12 years ago. It clearly has stayed about the same. 2023 is going to win the value category though, because it just has better minifigures and a better design for your display. Finally, for my opinion between these two models, I have a lot of nostalgia for 2011. I loved what they did back then, and I still love it today, but... I just can't deny that 2023 is better. It looks better, it functions better with just little things like opening the cockpit, and the minifigures are just far superior than what we saw in 2011. Look, 2011 is not a bad set if you own it or if you are thinking of buying it because you've got some nostalgia for the Clone Wars or you just wanna have both side by side, you wouldn't be buying a bad set. You'll be paying more money than you will for the new set that LEGO's put out for just 80 bucks, but you're gonna be happy either way. I do think it is worth the upgrade. Having the new shiny thing based on the new show is worth something to many people, including myself, and I think you would be very happy with the upgraded design. So that is gonna conclude this comparison with the clear winner being the 2023 set. Let me know what you think about these two in the comments section below. Leave a like if you enjoyed, and you can watch more LEGO Star Wars comparisons on the end screen now.